Next question. Will not forgiving someone affect your salvation? That's a really good question. Okay. Not forgiving someone. So let's go to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse 14. For And this is right after the Lord's Prayer, of course. So do not lead us in temptation. Deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Then Jesus continues saying, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. I don't want to make this too long. We've been here 45 minutes. But um, Jesus is not talking to Christians here. Remember that. Jesus is talking to Jews. This prayer is something he's teaching to Jewish people. The whole Mount, uh, the whole Sermon on the Mount, a large portion of it is referring to the law being elevated. This is when Jesus says, you've heard it said, do not commit adultery. But I tell you, even if you look at someone with lust, you have committed adultery in your heart. That is Jesus just elevating the law. Like you think the law is over here, but really it's over here. This, this is why you need a savior because you can't measure up to this. That's the point. Um, so this is one verse that people go to for that forgiveness thing. And we're going somewhere here. So stick with me for a second. Matthew chapter 18, verse 35. Uh, okay. This is right after the parable of uh, the wicked servant who wouldn't forgive a little bit of debt that his fellow servant owed him after he had been forgiven by the king who he owed a lot. Right. So first Peter comes to him over here in verse 21 says, how often shall I forgive my brother, my brother, wait, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times. And that's actually generous by Jewish standards because to the Jews, if you keep doing the same thing to me and I forgive you three times, three times, that's it. Like I've done a lot, but Peter doubles it and even goes one more. Like this is a lot, right? There's a lot of forgiveness for one offense. And Jesus says, nope, 70 times seven. 70 times 7. So he's, again, raising the bar. And then he tells this parable of the king who forgave a servant. And then the servant w uh, went to another servant who owed him just a little bit of money and uh, put him in jail because he couldn't pay or something like that. And so then Jesus says, my heavenly father also do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. The point of this whole parable is to show you that you ought to forgive because you've been forgiven. Okay, you ought to forgive because you've been forgiven. That is the New Testament uh, context or the New Testament uh, order. In the Old Testament, you do things solely for the sake of being righteous. Even if you don't want to forgive someone, you forgive because God won't forgive you if you don't. Okay, but in the New Testament, it comes with a different understanding. So let's go to uh, Colossians 3, Colossians 3, verse 12 to 13. Wait, I just realized you were 19, this thing. Oh, man. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on, oh, let me move this, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you must also do. So Christ forgave you, that is why you forgive. Another one is Ephesians 4, 32. James 4.32 says, And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even, again, as God in Christ forgave you. So the mindset here is because Christ has forgiven you, because God has forgiven you in Christ, you also forgive the other people. Forgive those who offend you because you have been forgiven. Not forgive so that you'll be forgiven. Forgive because you've been forgiven. Okay.